Is Xander here at Vespa Portland? <laughs> sort of. San Diego. No San Diego trip is complete without a taco shop run at, I think, 11 p.m. So why, why am I filming this? Uh, had the honor. These guys invited me down to, uh, we're going to Mexico City tomorrow, and then we're going to ride Vespas from there to Morelia, Michoacan, and then onward to Guadalajara for a rally. And uh, you can't say no to that invitation. So that's what we're doing tomorrow. It's pretty much just like a walk in the park. It's pretty easy, actually. In the weeks leading up to this ride, I got asked a lot of questions like, are you riding to Mexico? Are you renting scooters once you're down there? How is this all working? So to give some context to this ride and the logistics of how it's all possible, we have to go back to April of 2015. Back then, Steve Bailey, Eric Dutra, and Robot built custom Vespa GTS bikes in the aesthetic style of the greatest beer on earth, Pacifico. That's right, bright yellow frames with red and brown and gold powder-coated accents. The footage you're seeing here is from that ride in 2015, and it's all on YouTube as a 12-part series that is well worth a watch. Over the course of 10 days, those three guys, Steve's wife Christina and a few others along for the trip, rode from San Diego, California, all the way down to Puebla, which is southeast of Mexico City. The route was roughly 2,500 miles, and they crossed something like eight or nine Mexican states. That long ride ended at the Encuentro Nacional Vespa 2015, which is the national Vespa rally for all of Mexico, similar to what we have in the U.S. at Amera Vespa. When the rally was over, the bikes were all left in Mexico City at the home of a friend, and everyone flew back to San Diego. And then a few months later, they all flew back down to Mexico City for another vacation to ride the bikes to Guadalajara, where they would be left with another group of friends. Over the last couple of years, those bikes have bounced back and forth between Mexico City and Guadalajara in the care of the local Vespa clubs. Most recently, the bikes came back to Mexico City to be used to help feed and deliver water to displaced animals after an earthquake. So the purpose of our trip was simply to get the bikes from Mexico City back to Guadalajara. And the plan in May is to ride from Guadalajara to the site of the 2019 Encuentro Nacional in Guanajuato. So that's a long story to say that essentially the point of these bikes is to exist in Mexico for vacations and various rides around the country. It's unknown at this point if they'll ever be brought back to the U.S., but you got to admit it's pretty awesome to be able to fly to a different country and find your own bikes waiting for you. It allows a deeper level of travel than you would ever get on a tour bus through the same regions. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> you think it's a decent spot for a nap? Sure works. This guy is the one that I haven't seen in many years. <laughs> Using the TV as a mirror? Yeah, hell yeah. That's about all I use it for. San Diego was just a quick stopover for me, uh, sleeping on the couch at Robot's house. It was pretty cool to check out his new custom Vespa Sprint that he just finished after a few years. There's a lot of custom wiring and other cool features on that bike, and he actually has to keep it inside the house because the garage is full of other bikes. Hey, where are we going tomorrow? Uh, I don't know, somewhere in Mexico. Spent some pesos. Early the next morning, we took off to the border and walked across, uh, heading to the Tijuana airport. Now, why is that? Well, it's way cheaper to fly domestically within Mexico than it is to fly into Mexico from the U.S. So if you're lucky enough to live in San Diego or know people who live there and you have a little bit of extra time, you can just walk across the border to the Tijuana airport and take your flight from there. Crossing the border at Otay was no big deal as usual. Just a long walk with some heavy boxes full of Vespa parts. We had a little wine and cheese breakfast in the airport and got right on the flight. Arriving in Mexico City, we piled into a taxi and hit the road to Trapo's house where the bikes had been stored for a while. These bikes have some miles on them. Christina's blue sprint that I was lucky enough to ride has 10,000 miles now, and over 9,000 of those have been put on in Mexico. And Robot's GTS has something like 62,000 miles on it. Yeah, if you've ever needed confirmation that Vespas are super reliable and basically go forever, well, there you go. So we spent the afternoon just prepping bikes for the ride and getting settled into them. Steve, Trapo, Alejandro, and Dutra all took off to get some tires mounted, while Robot, Christina, and I did some valve adjustments and hung out and drank beers. I'm just telling you, sometimes the thing is actuating, and then you got two, two sloppy of this. Where are we? 
Central, right? ¿Dónde yeah. estamos, Trapo? Un video. Es, Con eh, los Vespistas en Oregon. Eh, this is the center of the city, Mexico City. It's very close to the center. How far is Zucca? Uh, maybe three miles. By Vespa? Yeah, in Vespa, five minutes, five minutes to the center, in car downtown. With, in car with traffic, how many minutes? In car, maybe one hour. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours. <laughs> Two hours. Bienvenido de este. Trapo and his wife Darani rescue animals from the streets and other bad situations for rehabilitation. They currently have 11 animals in their house, including eight cats and three dogs. The black dog you're seeing named Negra was involved in some kind of a building collapse, but they were able to get her out of the debris before she passed away. She's had surgery for her hip, stomach, and eye, and she's doing very well now. As you can see, she's a super sweet dog that just wants to be touched. The small curly-haired dog is named Chili, and tragically came from the home of a person who was murdered. The dog actually lived in the apartment for two weeks after the incident before Trapo was able to get the police to open up the door and allow him to take it. Pretty much everything about that story is crazy. We hung out at their house for a while, catching up and then exchanging stickers and t-shirts. Trapo and Alejandro run Scooter Mex Motors, which you can follow on Instagram. Basically, they specialize in getting Vespa parts into Mexico for distribution to riders there. But this is more old. So this is sort of funny. Uh, we're just staying at a love hotel, like rooms by the hour. Uh, super cheap, it's like 15 bucks. <laughs> the rooms are perfectly fine. It smells like an indoor pool though. So a lot of bleach. Here's a little room tour. Got some towels, beautiful swan. You got a bed, a bathroom, a small little sink, and a shower. How nice. After that, we headed out to dinner. The first stop was at a new restaurant called San Cosmico. It was closed for the night, but they wanted to show it to us since we were likely leaving early the next morning. San Cosmico is in the San Rafael neighborhood and is owned by Trapo's friend Alejandro and his longtime girlfriend, Amy. San Cosmico serves sushi, Mexican dishes, breakfast, sandwiches, coffee, and cocktails. It's definitely worth checking out on any trip you may take to CDMX. After that, we headed over to a different restaurant for flank steak tacos and a general feast of queso, beans, rice, beers, and more. <laughs> Once dinner was over, everyone was pretty tired and thinking about the ride early the next morning, but when you're traveling and it's time to rally, you better rally. So instead of heading back to the hotel, we hopped on the bikes and cruised over to Celtics Pub in La Condesa to meet up with the Malportados Vespa Gang. The Malportados Vespa Gang rolls real deep and they are a wild bunch. There was a St. Patrick's Day party going on at the bar with a pretty legit cover band playing all the rock hits. Just enjoying uh, Dos Equis. I got to behave tonight. We stayed pretty late into the night and we're all trying to take it easy, being at altitude and having to leave somewhat early in the morning. But the beers were flowing from every direction. I eventually just held on to a dark, empty bottle so I wouldn't be handed another beer. The Malportados were a super hospitable and fun group to hang out with, but yeah, like I said, pretty wild. Oh, 